Please welcome back to Project Anonymous and welcome to Inkscape Part 4 tutorial. In today's video, we're going to go over the Break Apart Fill Objects tool in Inkscape extensions. Mm -hmm. So let's get to it. So the Break Apart Fill Objects tool was something that one of you told us about in a comment that we really had no idea existed at the time. Uh, but for those of you who have a lot of issues in your params checks getting errors, the Break Apart Fill Objects tool seems to solve a lot of those for us, especially when we're doing the trace bitmap feature. There are some cleanup steps that you'll have to do afterwards, potentially depending on your design. But for us, it seems worth it uh, because who wants to go through each object to try to make sure it's going to work right? So this has been incredibly helpful for us for our trace bitmaps. So let's get to it. Go ahead and bring in a logo design that we want to turn into an embroidery file. So we just got this little company logo. All right, we'll go ahead and shrink it down. It's a good size there. Now we're going to go ahead and do a trace bitmap. All right, so we have our trace bitmap done. You can see that this is now an SVG versus an image here. So We'll go ahead and create a new layer for it. So now let's just do a quick params check to show you that this is not going to uh, embroider as is. So we'll go ahead and Ink stitch params. And you can see we get the, the normal error that we get border crosses over itself, shape not valid. So rather than going through uh, the processes that we've shown you before, we're going to go ahead and use the tool um, in the ink stitch extensions called break apart fill objects that one of you told us about and really appreciate. And we'll see what this does. All right, so now you can see that it's changed some of the things in our design. Now, at first we would kind of freak out about this because, well, obviously we don't want our O, P, and A to stitch out with no hole in it, but I'm just gonna show you real quick. We're gonna leave this highlighted and we're gonna go back into our params and you'll see that it will actually stitch out without those uh, filled in. So you can see without any modifications um, going through any other parts of this design other than hitting that break apart fill objects we've gotten this thing through params and it would stitch out now there are some issues that we want to point out if you just left it like this uh, to stitch out and we'll go ahead and show you real quick so I'm gonna close out of this so I'm gonna ungroup this real quick just to, so I can show you uh, moving in an individual part it's object ungroup so we have all of our different colors and objects in a different box, which is what we want here. Now, just to show you real quick, I move this O, you can see that there's this under layer, which we didn't want. Um, not really sure why that's there. So what we're gonna do to fix this so that it doesn't try to stitch out something underneath it, 
is I'm gonna move this top layer to the back by clicking that. And now I can reselect this gray layer and delete it. It looks like there's two gray layers. And now finally, my O is the only thing there. So let's see what else, if there's anything else. You can see this M as well. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna move this M to the back and reselect the M to delete the gray layers. Preemptively try it with the P and you can see here All right, so now we just have a single layer with black. So if I did another params check of this word company, we should just see a single uh, black layer of stitching. And that's perfect. And a second order effect of doing that by going in order is it made it so it was not jumping back and forth between letters it went from right to left and of course like we showed you in the anyways tie-dye shirt you can change the order that this stitches out by uh, basically telling which letter is on top and the last letter on top is going to be the last thing to stitch but this is working fine and let's see, uh, I don't believe we had any other layers. Under here, and that was all, oh, we got one right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and undo all of that move. And then I'm gonna move this down to the bottom so I can reselect and delete this guy and that guy, perfect. I'll do a params check of that. And now that's perfect. So the last thing we'll show you is though it's this company is going to stitch out correctly because the the path is still there and it knows where to stop it when you look at this I mean it, it's not really aesthetically pleasing to look at it and also if you're just making like graphic design or something you still would want to get rid of yeah absolutely if you were to you know want to move this onto something else and not embroider obviously you want this to look like a no so we'll show you really easy way and I believe you showed everyone how to do this before right yeah Using the tie-dye video? Yeah, so in order to regain the hole in the letter, we're just going to break apart the objects and we'll go ahead and select all of them. Might as well do them all at once, right? A path and break apart. And now each of these holes are, are in there as well. Now we can go to path exclusion and it re-adds. So we can do the same thing here. And here. That looks pretty nice. Much better, right? Mm -hmm. And it will still stitch correctly. That's what's important. The last thing we'll show you to look out for, if you're gonna use this extension in Ink Stitch, um, break apart fill objects, is that sometimes depending on the quality of your image that you import here, you may get little remnants of edges that just aren't right. And if you like just highlighted the entire thing like this, it's gonna select those little bits that will probably cause issues in your stitch out that you don't want. Um, so what we've learned to do is really just highlight the things that we want. So we'll just, Highlight the individual objects that we want. And then we'll move them off of our work surface. And this looks empty right now, 
But if we were to zoom in really far, you may see little bits of uh, the border of your design that highlight. And those are the things that would cause you issues if you've gone through params of each individual object. So you would just highlight this whole area. If nothing shows up, you're, you should be good to go and embroider. So we'll do a quick um, simulator. So we got pretty great results. Uh, again, with very little work, just importing an image, doing trace bitmap, and then using the extension within InkStitch of break apart fill objects. Again, the credit is owed out to one of you commenters for letting us know about this feature, but it really has saved a lot of time in having to individually check each object. This is just so much simpler. Again, it really kind of depends on the quality of the image that you import as to if you're going to get any remnants along the edge um, due to Inkscape not really understanding where the borders of your image are. And then with just a few cleanup things that we showed you just now, you can get your embroidery project going pretty quickly. That's it. everyone who has commented and gave us feedback or any like tips and tricks it's really helpful and useful for all our viewers as well as us so yeah, thank you we're not experts here <laughs> with inkscape by any means we've just played around with it we're very new to it but uh, really appreciate the tips that uh, some of you have left for us and we're very happy to pass along the tips that we've learned on to you so mm -hmm. keep commenting <laughs> Anyways, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like it if you liked it. Like it. Subscribe if you enjoy our content. Subscribe. And turn on those notifications so you get my every single time we post a video. Stay crafty. And be happy. 